NASA's new findings on Mars shocks Elon Musk. NASA's InSight lander finds craters and space rocks on Mars. The first observations of its kind made outside of Earth, InSight locates craters by detecting seismic and acoustic waves from meteorites. According to space scientists, one of the numerous distinctions between the two planetary neighbors is that Mars is much more susceptible to being hit by space rocks than Earth because of its flimsy atmosphere and proximity to our solar system's asteroid belt. With the aid of NASA's robotic InSight lander, researchers are now acquiring a deeper ground of this characteristic of Mars. Hello everyone and welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos. And let's begin! On Monday, scientists explained how InSight detected seismic and acoustic waves from the impact of four meteorites on its surface and computed the locations of the craters they left behind, the first such measurements outside of Earth. The sites of the craters were verified by the researchers using data from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in orbit. Planetary geophysicist Bruce Bannert of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who is leading the InSight project, stated, These seismic measurements provide us an entirely new instrument for understanding Mars Mars or any other planet we may deploy a seismometer on. The four space rocks at InSight tracked, one of which touched down in 2020 and the other three in 2021, were relatively small in size, weighing up to about 440 pounds and measuring up to 20 inches in diameter. They also left craters that could be up to about 24 feet wide. They descended between 53 and 180 miles from InSight. One burst into at least three fragments, each of which left its own crater behind. We can relate the seismic signal's appearance to a known source type, location, and size. As a co-author of the work that was published in the journal Nature Geoscience, planetary scientist at Brown University Ingrid Dauber said, We can utilize this knowledge to better comprehend the full catalog of seismic events from InSight and use the results on other planets and moons too. The researchers anticipate that InSight's data, which spans from 2018 to the present, will contain further information about similar disasters now that their seismic signature has been identified. The three-legged InSight, whose name is an acronym for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy, and Heat Transport, touched down in the Elysium Planetia, a huge and largely flat plain north of the Martian equator in 2018. The meteoroid, which is the name for a space rock before it strikes the surface, is twice as likely to hit Mars's atmosphere than it is Earth. Earth, on the other hand, shielded by a considerably denser atmosphere. Therefore, meteoroids frequently fragment and disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in fireballs that hardly ever make it to the surface to leave a crater. On Mars, by contrast, hundreds of impact craters are growing somewhere on the planet's surface each year, according to Dauber. So imagine living on Mars. How could we protect ourselves from this event? This event makes Mars inhabitable. According to Musk, only 1% of Earth's atmosphere's thickness can be found on Mars. A rich source of space pebbles, the asteroid belt is situated between Mars and Jupiter. Through the detection of more than 1,300 earthquakes on Mars, InSight seismometer sensor proved that the planet is seismically active. Seismic waves picked up by InSight were used in studies published last year to better understand Mars's internal structure. These studies included the first estimations of the size of Mars's enormous liquid metal core, the thickness of its crust, and the composition of its mantle. When Elon Musk started SpaceX in 2002, he had a vision of a greenhouse on Mars that was very similar to the one that was later shown in the 2015 hit movie The Martian. Within a short period of time, his fantasy transformed from a modest botanical experiment into an idea for a self-sufficient Martian metropolis. He made his case in a speech delivered in 2016 at the 67th International Astronautical Congress. History will split into two distinct trajectories. One option is for humans to live forever on Earth, after which there will inevitably be an extinction event, according to Musk. The alternative is to evolve into a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which I believe is the best course of action, he said. Although Musk later explained that the extinction event he was referring to might occur decades or possibly even eons into the future, the circumstances on Earth right now are getting more and more dangerous for people. As the Earth continues to warm, we are at risk for deadly heat waves, food insecurity, and devastating natural disasters, just to name a few. Sadly, there's still a long way to go before the Red Planet can serve as a reliable replacement for Earth. The atmosphere of Mars contains 96% carbon dioxide, whereas carbon dioxide concentrations are measured in parts per million on Earth. This is only one example of the logistical challenges that would need to be solved by Martian colonists. 
Musk's hopes for an extraterrestrial civilization may, in an ideal world, coexist with the progressive environmental principles that have motivated projects like Tesla's solar program. However, despite having space-related goals, SpaceX's operations tangibly affect the ground below. SpaceX's rockets aren't powered by electricity like a Tesla sports car. Instead, they use fuel to drive them. Compared to other sources of greenhouse gases, carbon emissions from space launches are negligible, yet they may still have a significant impact on the climate. The cause of this is one specific byproduct of rocket propulsion called black carbon. These microscopic clumps of crystalline carbon atoms have a brief atmospheric lifetime but are very photosensitive. On the surface of the Earth, black carbon from the burning of fuel, coal, and wood poses a hazard to the environment and to public health, especially in developing nations. However, black carbon is only present in the high atmosphere atmosphere due to rocket engines. Scientists have been alerting the public for years that these emissions may have unforeseen repercussions on the climate. However, the pace of research on the subject has been incredibly slow. According to Darren Tuhey, an atmospheric scientist at the University of Colorado Boulder, we recognized the black carbon problem in 2010. The main characters are the same, even though the tale changes. At a symposium in Prague in 1985, a team of atmospheric scientists led by Pawan Bartia showed a harrowing satellite image to a room full of academics, policymakers, and journalists. There was a huge hole in the stratospheric ozone layer immediately above Antarctica. The culprits were a class of substances known as the chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, which were utilized by producers of refrigerators. The Montreal Protocol was signed by 46 nations two years later, and over the following 10 years, industries all over the world gradually phased out CFCs. Ozone levels are now gradually increasing. However, the ozone layer may once again be under danger due to space flight. It is particularly effective at absorbing sunlight and converting it into heat, making black carbon a great greenhouse gas. The upper atmosphere experiences an increase in temperature when rockets pass through it. For this effect to be very noticeable at this time, there are currently not enough space launches. Tuhei cautions, however, that repeated launches such as those necessary to populate a Martian city would provide a challenge. But could Elon Musk legally be the supreme leader of his own colony on Mars? The United Nations Officer for Outer Space Affairs, which oversees the Outer Space Treaty, was established in 1967. It is signed by practically all spacefaring nations and asserts that outer space is for humanity and cannot be claimed by nations. This also applies to people individually. The idea that laws from Earth can be applied to distant planets is another principle that is essential for space law. A space lawyer, lecturer, and senior research associate at UNSW Canberra, Duncan Blake, argued that neither the U.S., SpaceX, nor Elon Musk could own any territory on Mars. Mr. Blake argued that the International Space Station instead establishes a precedent for governments to have jurisdictional power, which would allow Mr. Musk to create a Mars station, or his authority would come from a nation, in his case, the United States. However, this would extend visitation rights and a host of additional obligations to other countries. Before going to Mars, humanity will have to figure out how to coexist with various colonies, split resources, and decide who governs each area, says Mr. Blake. Even when a non-governmental organization acts against the laws of the country, Mr. Blake said, if a national government's in a position to impose any control over space activity, they will do so, is the conventional expectation. And that ends today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you like and share it and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment down below your own thoughts. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.